Now, we've talked about counting, right? And throughout that whole process, you have to help the student along. Get them to feel comfortable. Alleviate any stress that they may have. Okay. Once they're comfortable with counting, right? Get them into adding, right? Single digits at first, double digits, triple digits, digits that are like into the hundreds of thousands or millions. Get them to add multiple numbers together. Get them to stack it properly. Put the commas in the right place. Get them to read every single number. Get them to make sure to carry forward, not just ones when you're giving them two, two, two numbers to add. When you give them five, four or five numbers to add stacked up together, the number that they're carrying to the top, right, is general, or it could be more than a one, more than a two, could be a three or a four, right? Get them comfortable with that. Once they're comfortable with adding, start showing them how to add numbers that repeat, okay? So for example, get them to add the following number. 999 nine, nine, nine plus 999 nine, 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 nine. okay get them to add that number okay you're planting seeds right now once they do that emphasize to them hey look that was the same number added three times right Get them to add single digits, okay, but repeated numbers, right? Repeated digit. So get them to add three plus three plus three plus three plus three plus three. What does that equal to, right? Do a couple of these. Get them to do it manually. And it's going to take them a little bit of time to do in general, right? Because they don't know multiplication. So they're going to go three plus three is... 6, 6 plus 3 is 9, 9 plus 3 is 12, 12 plus 3 is 15, 15 plus 3 is 18. So you have 6 numbers, 6 threes added together gives you 18, right? And you write down 18. Now you're ready to introduce them to the concept of multiplication. Once you show them a handful of these. So what I end up usually telling my students is that multiplication is just an extension of addition because mathematics is really built on five axioms, five rules, right? And everything else is layered on top. And this is one of the core, uh, core teachings of mathematics where multiplication is really just an extension of addition. So to explain to them how this works, I usually use the number two because most kids are pretty familiar with number two, right? So I go, okay, what's two plus two? And they say four. And then I go, what's two plus two plus two? They say eight. Right? What's two plus two plus two plus two? Right? And they say, did I say eight on that one? That's a six. This is an eight, right? Two plus two plus two plus two plus two, right? Ten. And then I go, well, what's two added together a hundred times, right? So we've got two plus two plus two plus two plus two dot 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 plus two, plus two, 100 times, right? Sometimes the students have to think about it. Sometimes they give the answer right away, right? And they go 200, right? Now, it's really important to make them understand, the student, student appreciate that it's going to take a lot of effort to write down two 100 times. If they don't appreciate it, tell them to add two two together 1,000 times, right? Just imagine how long, how much space it would take, right? So mathematicians, what they ended up doing is they made life simple for us, 
what they did was add a new symbol which basically states if you're adding the same number multiple times then all you need to do is take the plus sign right rotate it 45 degrees it changes to multiplication and once that happens all it means is if you have this number two here and you do this and if you want to add it 100 times you're going to go two times 100 which is 200 okay so the multiplication symbol is really a representation of you taking a number and adding it together this many times right so for this one it would be two times two this one would be two times one two three this one will be two times four two times one two three four that's how many times you're adding it together right so if we're going to write down the multiplication version of this this would be two times two two oops two times three two times four two times five two times one hundred right okay Once they know how to do this, once they appreciate what this is, in general, I start off with simple numbers, right? You're starting off with single digit numbers. You're going to go five times four. Just throw down some simple concepts. And we're not doing this right now to teach them the multiplication table. Right now, at the beginning stages, the process is to teach them what the multiplication means represents we're not trying to get them to memorize the multiplication table yet we're going to do that as soon as they appreciate what this concept is right so two times four if they don't know it right away get them to add four fives together right and that's sort of the process initially uh when i'm trying to teach someone mathematics when i'm uh, trying to teach my students mathematics is get them to do it through addition right and they have to do that initially when they're doing this right so they go five plus five plus five plus five 20 right five times four is 20. Okay. once they hit this level where they're able to do very simple versions of this that's when we start talking about the multiplication table so let me set up the 10 by 10 grid here and again we're we've we have a video out there showing the 10 by 10 grid how to do multiplication right but we're going to go through it right now i'm going to show you the exact process i use to teach my students the multiplication table because once they've reached this stage right i drop a little bit of hint on how to multiply 99 by 3 it would be the same as adding 399s together 399s to, or 999s together right but i sort of drop a little hint for them for them to appreciate that what we're about to learn is going to be applied here okay so let me set up the grid here take this guy down and then we're going to go through the process of doing the multiplication table okay how we how i go about anyway teaching the multiplication table to students so now that the student sort of appreciates what multiplication is which is just basically an extension of addition right really important to emphasize this multiplication is an extension of addition and if they don't really appreciate it yet they will by the time you're done teaching the multiplication table right so in general you would give them simple single digit numbers at random to multiply right you'd go two times three right if they need to get them to write it out right two plus two plus two that's what two times three is which is equal to six which is equal to six these guys are equal right two times five 
right? It's 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is 10, which is 10, right? Once you're at this stage, right, what you can do is teach them the multiplication table, but one piece at a time. Don't lay out the multiplication table yet. I usually start off with the number two, right? So this is what I end up doing. I go, what's two times one? And get them to fill it out. Two. Two times two. Two times three. Two times four. Two times five, right? So in general, with my students, I actually write these down and they fill in these this spot right two times six two times seven two times eight two times nine and two times ten okay get them to fill out four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen 18 20 okay the reason we're doing this is because this directly links up to them with the addition right because all they have to do is just add two to the previous one and they'll figure this out really fast like really they'll figure it out super fast so they'll go four six eight ten twelve blah, 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 do it that way after the number two in general i teach them the number five and then the number ten so I do the five multiplication, same way, right? If you want, we'll do this in red. So I do the same thing, but I do it with five. Where should we write this? Five times one, five times two, five times three, five times four, five times five, five times six, five times seven, five times eight, five times nine, and five times 10 equals 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 and equals okay get them to fill it out okay do it with the tens as well because the tens it takes uh it's it's weird because uh initially most kids don't really appreciate when they're multiplying with the tens all they got to do at, is add a zero at the end of whatever number they get but once they figure it out they're speedy gonzalez with it okay so get them to the tens as well sometimes when i'm teaching this at the end i like throwing in five times eleven or two times eleven right so i add it here at the bottom five times eleven right and most students pick that up as 55 easy right or 5 times 12 right and they go 60 okay once we reach the state we're ready to create the multiplication table so let's create the multiplication table right now okay I'm just gonna lay down the table here and then we're gonna go through it I'm gonna show you how I get them to fill out the table and it's not just a one-time process the multiplication table is it takes a little bit of time for students to learn, right? A lot of students that I've worked with when they enter high school in grade eight, they don't know the multiplication table. That's how bad our current education, math education system is in Canada, United States, okay? So what I get them to do is to learn the multiplication table and they have to be able to generate it uh, fairly rapidly. They have to know it well okay so let's create the table here and let's write down the numbers here so we got uh, da, 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 one two three four five let's put number one here one two, three, one here so five So we got our multiplication table up. Now, when teaching multiplication, you're basically going to be 
getting the student to transfer this information into a table so they see it visually how it plays out right and when teaching multiplication I usually put a multiplication here right so the kid becomes familiar with the symbol right when doing this I either get them to go across one row first or down one column first right so if we're doing the two multiplication table I get them to do this and I explain to them that this is basically the way they can read it is two times one is two should we do this in blue let's do it in blue now keep in mind uh, if you have a multiplication table like this to grid up make copies of it the blank version right because you're going to use a lot of these it takes a while for most people to learn the multiplication table okay really important this is one of the main places where i tell my students if they don't know the multiplication table by heart they have to go back and learn the multiplication table okay in general those are students that i meet just coming into high school right uh, when we're straight out ex i'm explaining to them and expecting them to learn the multiplication table right if they're elementary school if they're younger right tweens or pre-tweens right if they're a kid spend the time required for them to learn this it's going to make their lives a lot easier right so in general this is what we end up doing okay once i've gone through this right and i usually do this for the twos the threes the fives the tens the fours the lower numbers and the six and seven and eight and nine uh, kids have a harder time with okay now to teach them that once we reach that state let me let me remind you of this one too we put out a couple of videos right regarding multiplication where one of them was the finger method for multiplying nines right so you can take a look, take a look at that video and see how, how that works the nine multiplication is easy you basically do this here let me show it to you so um, it is basically information from the video right so the nine multiplication all you end up doing is holding up your hands right and whatever number it is let's say you're multiplying three times nine right so you go one two three you pull this down and whatever result you got which is two this counts as the tens so 27 okay if you're going to go seven times nine you're going to go one two three four five six seven times nine right this is the table so this is 63 right if you're going to go nine times five right nine times five you're going to hold up your hand you're going to go one two three four five right so nine times five is 45 right my fingers are all red because of the red marker right so 45 that's what nine times five is you can take a look at that video if you want more examples of how to do that the other numbers that students have a hard time multiplying are six seven eight nine right and there's another finger multiplying technique that a student of mine showed me how to do and we put out a video for that as well right and if you want to multiply let's say seven times eight which is one of the ones that gives people a hard a hard time right basically the method is this you start off each finger the pinkies are the sixes six seven eight nine ten right so six seven eight nine ten so we're going to multiply seven times eight we're going to go six seven right that's the seven one and eight is going to be six seven eight you close these guys off okay the ones that are facing away from you towards the pinkies counts as tens including the two ones that are touching right so this is 10 20 30 40 50 right that's your five fingers those are the tens that's 50 and two the rest of the fingers two times three make it six so seven times eight is 56 okay 
Let's do another one because it's a little tricky, but you can definitely take a look at that video if you want to know how this works, right? Let's go six times seven. So here is the six, the pinky. Seven is this guy. Six times seven, you got 10, 20, 30, right? And then you got four times three, right? These are gone. Four times three is 12. 30 plus 12 is 42, okay? So six times seven is 42. If they need a sort of a trick to remember how to do this, they won't need it for long, okay? They won't need it for long, okay? So those are two finger tricks for multiplying the nines with any other number from one to 10 or multiplying the six to the 10 with the six to the 10. So it generates, that finger multiplication technique generates this batch over here, okay? The nine finger multiplication technique generates this column and this column. And these ones usually students find fairly easy, okay? Now, again, we've put out a video regarding the multiplication table. We've generated, generated this already. We did this a few years ago, right? When we set up the grid and we did the uh, 10 by 10 uh, math puzzle game on it as well, right? So it's really important to take a look at that video as well because there's a certain amount of symmetry within the multiplication table. And the symmetry goes along here, right? This is the perfect squares where it's like three times three, four times four, right? And whenever you're doing the multiplication table, initially you're gonna generate it with the student in the rows or in the columns, right? Once they know how to do that, you're gonna show them, once you get the whole grid up, and we will go through this, once you get the whole grid up, just point out that this is the line of symmetry and everything above this line, this diagonal repeats over here. And you're gonna to have to do this multiple times for that concept, for the kids, for the students to really appreciate what that concept means, okay? So in general, with all the numbers, right, from one all the way to 10, I go through this at least once with them, with some of the numbers multiple times. And then what we end up doing, we'll go to the grid. I get the students to fill out either rows or columns. Let's start off with the two row, right? So what we do is we go, what's two times one? Two. What's two times two? Four. What's two times three? Six. What's two times four? Eight. What's two times five? 10. What's two times six? 12. What's two times seven? 14. What's two times eight? 16. Was two times nine, 18. Was two times 10, 20. Okay. Initially, you're not gonna go that fast with them. You might go that fast with them if they're comfortable with this and you just wanna show them how you end up filling this out, which isn't a bad idea, but don't expect your students to be this fast with it, right? So we end up doing a couple of rows in general. Usually I teach them in one direction first, right? Once they're comfortable with that, I teach them the columns, right? Five times one is five. Five times two is 10. Because multiplication, it really doesn't matter if you go this number times that number, that number times that number. And these are things that I fill in, plant seeds for future lessons, right? Which isn't really necessarily in this initial phase of teaching someone how to count, add, and multiply, right? Five times three is 15. Five times four is 20. Five times five is 25. Five times six is 30. Five times seven is 35. Five times eight is 40. Five times nine is 45. Five times 10 is 50, okay? Once you've done a few rows, and it might take you a whole grid for them to really appreciate how you multiply the rows together. It might take them more than doing one grid or two grids or three grids. It takes a while to learn the multiplication table. That's why a lot of kids, a lot of students have a hard time with it. When they come into high school, I've met a number of students that don't know how to multiply, 
right? One of the reasons is because the centralized education system gives them the calculator and says use the calculator, which is horrendous, right? They need to be able to do this manually, right? Once they know how to do, how to rows work, how to columns work, right? And once they filled in a few tables, and it's going to take them filling in a few tables for them to really appreciate this, right? Get them to do the easy columns and rows first, right? The 10 column is easy for a lot of students, right? 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, right? You can get them to do mirror, right? The sister row to the column, right? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100, right? You can also get them to do the diagonal where there's a line of symmetry with everything above showing below, right? You can go 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, 5 times 5 is 25, 6 times 6 is 36, 7 times 7 is 49, 8 times 8 is 64, 9 times 9 is 81, right? Once you've done it once with all the rows, at least, once you've done it one with all the columns, at least, you can show them the diagonal, start there. And then around the diagonal, you can give them numbers at random and then give the mirror number for them, right? You could go four times seven is 28, right? And bring another highlighter out, right? And highlight that box and tell them, okay, what's this one? Or give them a grid with 12 things highlighted at random as a test and get them to do that or as an exercise and get them to do that, right? Four times seven is 28, right? And then what you can ask him is, you can go, hey, what's seven times four, right? Seven times four. Right? It's the same thing as four times seven. And if you take this line as being the line of symmetry, your two squares that way, your two squares this way. So that's 28. It takes a while for students to figure this out, that there's a mirror factor here, right? Five times two, we already got five times two here. So two times five is 10, five times two is 10. Here's the line of symmetry and you're two squares away, right? What did we have here? Two times nine is 18. So nine times two is 18. Okay. And that's the way you can start showing some of the symmetry in this. Okay. There are other patterns, but that's a pretty good pattern. That's really the most important pattern in this, aside from the rows and the column, of course, right? And once the students appreciate this, they go from here to here and from there to there and from there to there. Give them the doubles, right? Then start giving them numbers at random. Five times eight, 40. Three times two, six. Eight times three, 24. Three times eight, 24, right? Mix it up. Give them the mirror numbers. Remind them how it works. Okay, and the name of the game is when you're teaching the 10 by 10 multiplication table is get them to do it, correct their mistakes. If they need to start off, if they need to know what three times seven is, they need to start off with three times one, let them, right? Even though these ones might be filled out, once they start doing it, just point to them, re emphasize to them that, hey, if you want it to three times seven, you just have to go back to three times five, which was 15. And you got two more threes you got to add on to that. So that's 21, which is a six, right? 
I hope that's clear. It's, it's very personal teaching someone the multiplication table because you can, you can see how their mind's clicking, how they do pattern recognition, right? And from there, basically, you can start doing combinations of things, right? And the combinations of stuff we can talk about in future videos. Um, but basically, right now, this is sort of where I want to stop because the multiplication table is one of the first places that people have a hiccup, okay? That takes people out of the math game, right? Because once you know this, then you can do all types of multiplication, right? You could do here, let's do one here where you'll see where you can take it from the multiplication table, right? If you want to, for example, multiply, let's take this guy down. I'm going to take this guy down and might as well take it one level further, right? Let's take it one level further. So previously, what we did, we said one of the things that I like giving students is three 999s added together, right? So they're going to go 999 plus 999 plus 999, right? Now, if the student's learning this in addition, which they are with me, and I love giving this, right? They just line up the 99s, 999, 999, and they add them, right? So 9 plus 9 is 18, plus 9 is 27. So you put the 7 here, you move the 2 up top, right? That's three nines added together again. That's 27. Some students don't see that right away, right? They go two plus nine is 11. 11 plus nine is 20. 20 plus nine is 29. So they go nine and they put the two up there. And then they sometimes recognize, hey, these are the same numbers as here. So that's 29 and they go 29. Okay. So what I do when I've we filled out the multiplication table and they're comfortable with it they know how it works i go back to this right give them three 999s added together and get them to do this and tell them by learning the multiplication table they could make their lives a lot easier here because they can do multiplication in a stacked format right this is 999 added together three times and it really uh, brings it home to them that hey multiplication really means adding that number together that many times so that's three 999s added together which means instead of doing addition you could go 999 times three right so you can go 999 times three and remember, you have to flush everything to the right side, right? And then all you do, right, explain to the student that this process is the same as the addition process, right? But instead of going 9 plus 9 plus 9, you're going to go 9 times 3. Well, what's 9 times 3 or 3 times 9? 9 times 3, oh, we haven't done it yet, have we? No, not yet. 3 times 9 is 27. And 9 times 3 is 27, right? It's the same number. So 3 times 9 is 27, and they should know by now that they write the 7 in the bottom and the 2 goes up top. So 3 times 9 is 27, and the 2 goes up top. This is one place where you have to explain that you do the same thing here, but then you're just adding the above numbers, right? So 3 times 9, again, is 27, plus 2 is 29 so you put your 9 here and you put your 2 up top 3 times 9 is 27 add 2 you got 29 you got 29 and do this right beside each other okay really do it right beside each other because that way you can explain to them that this took a lot less work than this you have to write less it's faster right from there you can start doing more you can add you can give them large numbers multiple numbers to add together small multiple numbers to add together and then you can skip the whole adding process because they should understand it by now and just go straight into 
multiplying numbers together. And after the multiplication table, I usually just go to this level, one digit multiplied by multiple digits. Two digits multiplied by multiple digits, there's a little bit more to it where you have to add the zeros, right? And that is fairly easy to teach once a student has reached this level. And we've got video out there uh, from the language of mathematics that we did back in 2007, I guess, where we go through it again with chalk and on the walls, graffiti styles, talking about how you multiply, you know, multi-digit numbers together where you have to compensate for the zero you added there, right? So let's, let's just do one right now since we're talking about it, right? So you could go eight, seven, six, five times 36, right? The six number is easy. You just do it exactly the way you did here. Six times five is 30. You're gonna go zero, you're gonna put your three up. Six times six is 36, plus three is 39. You're gonna put your three up. Six times seven, we did this, right? Oh, we didn't do it, did we do it? Six times seven, we didn't do it, it's 42, right? So let's put 42 here. And seven times six is 42. And again, you can see the mirror line here. That's the mirror line. That's over there, right there, right? So 7 times 6 is 42, plus 3 is 45. 5, 4. 6 times 8, we did this one. Oh, we didn't do it. Did we do it 6 times 8? Oh, we didn't do 6 times 8. It's 48, right? 8 times 6 is 48. 6 times 8 is 48 plus 4 is 52, right? And then we've got to deal with the 3. Now, all you have to teach the student is because this is 2 digits, for the first digit under it, because there's nothing there, you've got to add the 0, right? Now you can go into detail saying that this is the tens here and the hundreds if there was another one and stuff like this but you don't need to right away you can just say hey this is the second number in so you're actually going to start here okay so three times five is 15. you put your five here you put your one up top this guy's gone you can cross it out or just remember that you're not adding these numbers some students like crossing it out okay three times six is 18 plus one is 19. you put your one up here three times seven is 21 plus one is 22 two you put your two there three times eight is 24 plus two is 26. and really emphasize that everything has to line up properly okay extremely important if it's not lining up properly it's not going to work, okay? It's, it's really important to show the structure of the language of mathematics to students and make sure they're starting off on the right foot, okay? And then once you get to this level, you're just adding these guys up. So 0 plus 0 is 0. 9 plus 5 is 4. Nine pl 5 plus 9 is 4. Oops, I forgot to carry the 1. 9 plus 5 is 14. You carry the 1 up here, right? 1 plus, six is, 1 plus 5 is 6, plus 9 is 15. You put the 1 up here. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 2 is 5. 5 plus 6 is 11. You put the 1 up here, and that becomes a 3. And this number, 8,000, and again, get them to read the numbers, right? 8,765 times 3, uh, 36 is... 315,540, okay? That's a big number. That's a big number. I hope that's clear. I hope that's okay. Um, this is sort of the process that I use to teach my students, take them from a point where they're just learning how to add, adding to, sorry, take my students from a place where they're just learning how to count from counting to adding to learning multiplication emphasizing the multiplication table 
and from the multiplication table showing them what it means to multiply numbers together large or small okay once they know how to do this you can layer on top of this and for me from here i go into subtraction negative numbers and division and that's something we'll talk about in uh, in future video and i hope um, i hope you found this useful i hope it helps you teach um, your loved ones your students uh, anyone that you're working with that needs to learn the multiplication table um, to teach them more rapidly and sort of help you navigate your way through uh, some of the places where they might be having hiccups and always remember this is extremely important always remember teaching someone mathematics teaching someone anything is very personal some students will have problems have to overcome obstacles in certain places where other students can easily navigate through okay take the time required to make them feel comfortable relieve stress from them don't punish them for making mistakes just get them to correct their mistakes okay that's it for now gang i'll see you guys in the next video bye for now